it's rusted just through old age. The car is about 25 years old, so uh, um, it's a good thing it happened now because this is the, uh, the test pack, and the new pack that's going to be going in there is going to be a lot heavier. So it's a good thing that these uh, lower control arm uh, A-frame mounts are going now, so I can drop everything out, uh, reinforce them, uh, re-weld them, and then uh, re-small up and come back on them and shoot another problem. So. so the easiest way to do this is just to drop the entire cradle motor transmission right out. That way I don't have to worry about uh, realigning the motor and transmission together or anything like that. So I see to drop the fluid out of the transmission and uh, we'll be good to go. So good morning everybody. This is uh, Eco Steve. Um, Again, uh, actually, thanks a lot for all your uh, great comments and your suggestions and uh, all your support that I've been receiving from uh, all types of media, especially YouTube uh, media and everybody else, and uh, it's been fantastic. And uh, as I mentioned, that there's a couple great uh, links that you can go to. Um, I'll try and post them on this video. Um, basically, uh, I'll, I'll put, probably put something ac across the screen down here that will flash across with some links there. Uh, it's uh, do-it-yourself-electric-car.com, and it's a fantastic site where you actually uh, you know get a lot of tips and whatnot, especially if you're uh, uh, starting out in an EV conversion like uh, myself. You know, there's a lot of great people out there that uh, have a lot of really, really good tips. So I'll probably uh, put something at the bottom of the screen here for that link for that. And if you want to see some electric cars that have been converted over from gas to electric, uh, another good place is uh, evphotoalbum.com, uh, I believe it is. And uh, you go there and you can actually uh, search by type and uh, vehicle and uh, you'll be surprised. Sometimes there's some uh, electric cars that are, uh, have been converted that are even in your own backyard that uh, you, know, uh, you can go take a look at. Uh, most people that convert over electric cars to, uh, you know, from gas to electric, they love talking about it, they love giving the support. They love giving you lots of information, give you rides, you know, and uh, it's good that way. That way you can actually see firsthand how a owner converted car can be, conver you know, converted in gas to electric, right? And, and how it works, you know what I mean? Um, it, it is a scary um, sort of a new endeavor that a lot of people do take. Uh, you know, and each part of the way you go, oh, okay, that worked. Whew. Okay, that worked. Whew. And then you take your first test, test drive an electric car and you get this EV grin on you and say, you know, fantastic, I did this, I made this, right? So, you know, be proud, you know, you deserve this. If you really want an electric car, you can make it. You don't have to wait for the big manufacturers to uh, make the electric cars, right? Uh, even as a group, uh, say there's, you know, two, three people that want to get together and make an electric car, you know, help each other out, you know, make one for one gentleman and he helps you make yours, right? And you can buy your parts and whatnot and you can learn and whatnot. There's some things though that I would suggest getting professional to do. So, for instance, uh, one of them would be uh, to make the coupler that joins the electric motor to the transmission. I had an amazing gentleman who uh, helped me make the coupler for mine. Uh, remember, remember, those parts of the motor have to be spinning at, you know, three, 4,000 RPM. So, you want it to be precise as possible, right? So, I had a machinist do that for me. So, it costs you a little bit of money. But, in the end, it's done professionally, right? Everything else we can hack with in the shop. We can you know, weld small parts and pieces and battery boxes and so forth like that. And, you know, the electrical is pretty much basic electrical stuff, but when it comes down to that, I had a professional do it for me, right? So, because on here, on the electric car, um, down here, yeah, here's the electric motor right here that's actually uh, uh, bolted onto the uh, transmission, right, right in here. So we have the electric motor, we have a coupler that's inside this aluminum part right here. Right inside there is a coupler that joins the electric motor to the transmission. Right, so basically, there's a part inside there that just joins them. So that has to be machined perfect, right? It has to be balanced perfect, right? So when you join it together, that there's uh, no vibrations and whatnot, right? So right now, I'm just uh, just pulled the cradle of the electric car. Uh, there's some suspension problems. It actually, it's rusting away here, and actually, it's pulled away from the frame. So uh, I have a buddy of mine uh, coming over tomorrow. He's going to help me uh, weld uh, new inserts inside here on both sides, beef it up, because. Um, the next series of batteries I'm playing in here, uh, again, it's going to be lead acid. I would love to go lithium, but, uh, you know, I haven't found that tree that makes, uh, grows money in my backyard yet. So we're going to go with some uh, more lead acid batteries. So there's going to be more weight in the car now uh, with the new batteries than before. So this little part where it, it, it came apart, rusted out, and fell out, it's a good thing to happen now instead of uh, driving on the road with uh, even a heavier battery pack in there, right? So, so that's just me uh, putzing around on a beautiful Saturday. Uh, as you can see, there's the uh, 1984 Pontiac Fiero. Got it all jacked up. So basically, it was easier to uh, 
pull the cradle right out the bottom and drag it out uh, like that instead of trying to lift the motor out and everything else and then having to try and weld underneath there right so this hole here maybe stop and go uh, you know banging knuckles and whatnot maybe took half an hour because all I had to do is uh, take off two uh, cables that uh, or two electric wires that uh, connect the electric motor here uh, two shift wires up there and then just four bolts uh, one there one there one there one there drop it down and uh, three on top of the springs so pretty much no problem at all right so that's it all right so it's Eco Steve again so I just uh, finished taking the motor and transmission off the uh, cradle here and as you can see it's pretty uh, rest inside there so that's the pivot point here where the actual a-frame would actually go up and down pivot inside so um, pretty much you can see how rusty it is inside there on the other side here it's uh, pretty rusty it's pretty chipped so what I'm gonna do is on each of these I'm gonna actually reinforce these by putting uh, more plate steel inside here and beef these up I'll probably cut these out here put some new inserts inside there and really beef it up right so it's actually gonna be pretty thick when I finish here. Uh, this side here is going to be fully rebuilt. On the other side here, I guess my instincts were right in uh, taking off both sides because inside here you can actually see the light through one of the sides there so it's all beaten up pretty good in there so we're going to reinforce uh, all those. So again, a uh, little headache getting everything off. As you can see everything's pretty much in a mess here. Motor off. A frames and A arms and whatnot. So, as you can see there, so pretty much uh, I figure as well, while I have the electric motor off, I'm going to take it apart and uh, check for wear on the flywheel and uh, the coupler ports and whatnot, and make sure it's all nice and tight because uh, I don't really want to be doing this again for quite a while. So, I might as well take the time, go through, and just do the preventive maintenance, make sure everything is. Uh, running well and there's no uh, bad wearing going on and whatnot because I do notice a little bit of noise happening once in a while when I uh, am driving along I hear some grinding so I just want to make sure I address that. So this is Eagle Steve here we're just uh, down uh, reinforcing the uh, cradle of the frame of the uh, 1984 Planet Fiero uh, electric conversion and as promised there's uh, George the uh, amazing welder over there uh, fabricating some parts with some inserts inside there so um, I thought I'd leave this one to the uh, professional and uh, I can learn some uh, valuable tips on uh, how to you know, melt some uh, metal in my own backyard. So, so there you go. So we're just going to reinforce uh, some parts right here. George just uh, grinded out some uh, parts there. So he's just going to um, uh, cut some pieces and reinforce the side here. So that's what it looks like right now. So it was a good, better option to pull it all off the car and uh, have it on the workbench. That's why it's nice and easy to see and, and weld and whatnot. So, so Eco Steve here. So, uh, George, the amazing welder right there. Cheers. He's uh, just um, built up the uh, the new parts for the uh, the A frame is going to be going in here, right? So he's uh, matched it out and uh, grooved it up there. A beautiful job in there. Better than me hacking away in my backyard there. So that's what it looks like before. Um, do a couple of tacks in there to sort of dry fit it and then uh, we'll uh, clean all up and put some uh, bracing on the front and uh, uh, reinforce it on the top and the back right so and then we're gonna do the same just add some inserts in here and just uh, beat these up a little bit so that they're uh, not gonna fail again so and that's it for this part so there you go so you go Steve here just uh, doing an update so we finished uh, welding the uh, Cradle on the 1984 Pontiac Bureau conversion. And uh, basically, I uh, just uh, put it all back in there, putting the brake systems back on and whatnot. So, finishing up here. Started this morning about 7 a.m. and it's about 7 p.m. right now. So, not a good 12 hours. But you know what? Mucking around, uh, doing the job properly. Um, I have George, a fantastic um, welder. Been doing welding for uh, 20 plus years. Uh, it's an art in itself. I think if I was to be reincarnated, I'd like to come back as a uh, professional welder. So, um, but uh, no, it uh, turned out really well. I'm very happy with the results. Uh, I learned a lot about uh, welding and uh, different techniques and whatnot. So, it's really nice when you, you're able to do uh, your understudy work with a professional. And uh, George's fantastic. He's uh, very, very uh, patient and uh, gives lots of knowledge. And, um, 
you can see the true passion in, uh, in his workmanship of how he likes to make sure it's done properly. Uh, even a park down here that you'll never see uh, the amount of care he, uh, he took in um, making sure everything was exactly perfect and cleaning up and, and, and painting and whatnot. Um, it was just uh, really impressive to, uh, to watch him uh, do that. So uh, I think he, uh, he's given me a little bit more, um, um, I, I guess, uh, seeing what he's done and, and how he's uh, sort of uh, taught me, uh, I think I have a little bit more uh, um, confidence in going forward and uh, tackling some more welding projects uh, for myself. And uh, so I just finished uh, putting this whole system back together on this side. I'm going to put the uh, uh, passenger side all together, throw the wheels on, drop it down, hook up a few more of the cables inside, work on a battery uh, uh, reconnection in the front there, uh, throw the charger on it, give it a quick charge, and uh, head home and uh, sit down and uh, hold my wife and uh, chat about the day and uh, fall asleep uh, lying in her arms. So I can't wait. Yeah, I miss her. It's, uh, it's Sunday and I, uh, I would love to be home with the family. Um, but this had to be done too, right? So, uh, but uh, I guess it's a sacrifice you make. Um, so that's what Steve's saying. Uh, catch you later and uh, happy uh, e-being. And remember, uh, you can actually uh, type in Eco Steve into Google, and that'll be the full first page there. So, uh, or you can actually uh, hit the uh, the blog spot. Uh, I'll post that at the bottom right down here. You'll see a little uh, blog spot. Uh, go eBeing at blogspot.com uh, and uh, check out uh, the progress of this and uh, see a bunch of tons of pictures. Uh, again, with that, if you type in Eco Steve into Google, on the whole first page there, you'll see uh, Flickr. Uh, photo album on there for myself and um, you may see some other ones on there. I'm a member of the uh, uh, DIY uh, electriccar.com as well as photoalbum.com so uh, you'll see those links on there as well. I'll try and uh, throw some links in the bottom down here so you can uh, take a look there and um, and uh, I uh, just want to thank you all for the uh, the good input and uh, all the knowledge and uh, it's been fun so I'll catch you later. You go Steve.